Now for our next speaker, Craig Rodriguez, who also joins us from the city. Uh, well, no. no, I'm like from the deep south, so Santa Clara. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> every, every time I've met you, it's been in the city. So, yeah, here we go. So, uh, so, uh, I think uh, I, I never thought in my life that I would give a talk in a bank vault. So I think this is an uh, uh, item on my bucket list that I never knew that I had. So I got cross it off. Uh, so I will talk about the, some work that I've been doing. Uh, so Mahmoud asked me at the last uh, meetup uh, to say a few words about this. And I wasn't really prepared that day, but I thought I would just put together some slides and and uh, tell people what I've been working on. And so I would say some of this stuff is kind of more mundane compared to some of the more interesting topics that the other speakers talked about. But um, you know, I'll just uh, tell you what I've been up to. And uh, so for those of you who may not know about a Python library called Twisted, I'll just say a few words about uh, what it is and you know what, what, what it, what it is to me. And uh, so it's a library written by Glyph Lefkowitz, who is right over there, <laughs> and many others. And to me, what this library does is it provides the basic building blocks for writing networking clients and servers. Um, so there's protocol implementations, uh, SSH, IRC, SMTP, IMAP, for those of you who they know the alphabet soup of uh, what those protocols mean. And uh, uh, there are uh, reactors. Uh, so these are things that uh, react to uh, operating system level events, usually on file descriptors. So things like select, KQ, EPOL, I, uh, IOCP on, um, on Windows, and even the new async IO. And uh, sort of in previous slides, I've, I've worked a lot on uh, middleware. Uh, so some other acronyms that don't mean a lot these days, like Corba and Com. I, uh, I experience things like this. Um, so I kind of recognize the value of these things. And so the library has been around for a long time. Uh, the, it has a website, twistedmatrix.com. The code is on GitHub. There's a book about it. Uh, you know, so those are snakes, and uh, uh, so there. There are other uh, what I call sub projects. I don't know if that's the right term to twist it. So there's a uh, client, which is uh, sort of similar to Flask and Bottle, so it allows you to uh, make like web kinds of things with routes and URLs. Uh, there's Trek, uh, which is similar to uh, requests. Um, there are projects out there that use Twisted. There's a lot of them. Uh, BuildBot is one. Uh, Scrappy uh, is another. There's a lot of other project, uh, projects, and there's a link to them. Uh, there are companies that use it. Uh, I couldn't think of uh, a lot of them, too, off the top of my head, with Hip, HipChat and Apple Calendar Server. And there's more links to companies out there. And so to me, this is like kind of the crown jewel of Twisted. So Twisted uh, very heavily uses a callbacks and asynchronous programming for writing network servers. So for those of you who have uh, maybe done like GUI programming a long time ago in like C or C++ and you're familiar with, you know, if you have a button, you have a function that's called, you click the button, and then using those techniques for writing network programming. Uh, Twisted makes a sort of paradigm of programming. And so there's a deferred uh, class, which is uh, quite central to this. And in recent years, uh, the main Python, uh, the designer of the Python language, uh, I believe he talked. in Python 3. And if you look at the Python 3 API and you look at Twisted, I mean, some of the things are like very, very similar 
they're just it's almost like we don't went and did like a like a rename of things and you know uh, so the concepts are they've been used a lot and, and they work and so I think that, that the fact that the language designer uh, went to glyph and absorbed some of those ideas into the language that that's uh, that's a very very good thing and so some things that are interesting to me about twisted I looked the first commit I could find was 2001 so is that about right? There was some history in CVS that wasn't okay. reported that goes back a little before that, but yeah, about 2000. Okay, so like what is 2000? So 16 years. So that's for Python, I mean, that's a pretty uh, long lived uh, project. And uh, the thing that is very interesting to me about Twisted is that uh, there's a, it comes with a tool for running unit tests. So now people are familiar with PyTest and Nose or whatever. But Twisted comes with its own, and it can run unit test style tests that PyTest and Nose can run. And unit tests and code coverage are very important to Twisted development in the process long before uh, they were sort of mainstreaming uh, in other open source projects. And so, like, why bother? Like, why bother porting this uh, thing to Python three? Well, uh, you know, my reason weren't really amazing. I mean, I like Twisted. I think it's pretty nice. I like the community behind it. They're pretty nice people. A lot of them are here today. And most importantly, I had time because I was in between jobs. And I wanted to learn a bit, improve my Python a bit, and learn about Python 3. And I wanted to help projects out which depend on Twisted, uh, but couldn't move to Python 3 because Twisted was not on Python 3. And then there's the other thing where the core Python developers are, you know, saying in 2020 the Earth is going to end and we're going to drop Python to support. There's yes. a clock, and you know, for some people they're like, "Yay!" Other people are like, "Who cares?" But you know, that's something that's out there and it's important to people, so it's motivating people. And then, but the major motivation for me was that last year Twisted moved from Subversion uh, to GitHub. And so it made uh, working with the project a lot easier as a contributor, and I think as a reviewer. And in the past year, a lot of the continuous integration was really improved. So things like integrated uh, code coverage, Travis, AppBear for Windows, BuildBot. Uh, it's just a lot easier to, to uh, submit a lot of stuff. So uh, you know, I had time on my hands, and they were on move to GitHub. I said, what the heck, just like, see what we can do here. And so you, I, I took a screenshot of this. This shows like the con contributions to Twisted over the years. And th this may not be a good measure, but like right around here in 2016, that's when the GitHub migration occurred. So before this, everything was on Subversion. And like at this time, I just started bombarding the project with patches. <laughs> and they were like, what the heck's going on? And then they said, OK, well, whatever. So they started. Uh, you know, accepting the patches or whatever. So that that's what that spike was. But you know, I feel that uh, as a user of GitHub, I really have an appreciation for how it makes it easy to participate in an open source project on both sides, as a contributor and maybe as like a maintainer or whatever. Uh, you know, I've worked on open source projects in the olden days where you were exchanging patches from CVS on mailing lists and reviewing them. You know, now things are move much faster. And so moving to Python 3. So there was a work done before me. Uh, so there's a project plan. I saw data in 2012. And there were a bunch of other people, uh, John Paul Calderon, Edemar, Amber, Glyph, Ralph, and others. They worked on it. And there was some funding done from Canonical uh, to do some porting work. And a lot of that work was done. Uh, but still, there were a lot of things that were left unported. So why is this such a tough job? Well, this is an old code base from 2001. And I have seen more things, features of the Python language and Twisted, things I would have, I'm like, what is this thing? <laughs> and it uses a lot of things, because it's been around as the language has evolved, you know, things have used 
and it's an advanced framework. It's uh, you know it's using many features of Python. It's doing some sophisticated stuff, and the uh, you know the development process is very much about unit tests and coverage. To you know any change, you have to do like uh, make sure there are unit tests and coverage. And so the process is right, but this workflow with subversion uh, for this kind of thing where you have to do like hundreds of things, uh, it's, it's slow. And you know, that's just how it is. And it's according to Python 3. So what is, what is all this Python 3 stuff? And so from my perspective, uh, there are a lot of, you know, I'm not a language designer, so I program and I use languages, and they all suck in some way or another. And a language designer will always try to make things better, but, you know, uh, that's it's a different perspective. And so, in my opinion, what Python 3 means to me is there are a lot of little changes that make the language cleaner. And so there's deprecated code that's just gone. So if you depended on that, you have to change your code, otherwise it won't work in Python 3. And some of these things, you, you just need to change your code, because otherwise it's like a syntax error in Python 3. So there's a good website, python3porting.com. That has probably the best overall list of all the differences in Python 3. I use that site a lot. And you know, just to give you some examples, print, you have to make it a function. If you do the old thing without parentheses, that's a syntax error. Uh, there's, if you ever used a has key on a dictionary, you have to change that to uh, in, otherwise that's a syntax error. Uh, you know, comp is gone, you have to change that. And then, uh, you know, range uh, doesn't allocate lists. And then it's like none of these things on their own are like really uh, super interesting to me. But if you have a huge code base, it's like a pain in the ass. You have to like see where, where do I change, what's broken, all this kind of stuff, and you have to change. So the hardest thing for me, I would say the most challenging thing for me is the C API for C extensions, that's changed. So if you have like C stuff, you've got to port that. And like porting C stuff uh, and have it work on Python 2 and 3, that's like, that's, that's hard. That's more. Uh, Harder than you know, putting parentheses around your print stuff. Um, so I had to. Uh, I ported the Windows IOCD reactor, Python three, and so I, I learned a lot about the C uh, extensions and Python and stuff like that. And, and so that's something I don't want to repeat again. But it was interesting at the time. And then, in my opinion, the biggest pain in the ass between Python two and three is this uh, changing of strings. So if you don't know, uh, the, the thing is, so in Python 2, you have this, if you put a U in front of a string, that's Unicode. If you don't put a U or anything, that's a string of type stir. But also, stir is also uh, bytes. And then if you put a B in front of the string, it's bytes, but it's also stir. And then, so the Unicode is not the same as stir, but it stirs the same as bytes. And in Python 3, they said, well, we need to make everything Unicode and internationalize and all that good stuff. So let's just change it up a bit. And now the thing that was not Unicode is Unicode. And so suddenly, whoa, you got to like change a lot of stuff because for a library as old as Twisted, uh, there's just a lot of there were a lot of assumptions in the code that a string is bytes, so you can just use it wherever you want and no problem. And for most libraries, maybe it's okay. But because Twist is doing a lot of stuff with networking and protocols, it actually matters. Because when you're sending bytes over the wire, bytes need to be bytes, and bytes are not Unicode. And so there were assumptions made in certain code that if you had a string, you could just shove it over the wire, and you're good to go. And that's not true anymore. And so this uh, requires you, you need to really look at the code. You can't just run some tool and uh, say, OK, change it. And, Done. You need to really look at the code and learn what's going on, and uh, and I did a lot of that. And uh, one uh, presentation I found was very helpful. Uh, Ned Ned Batchelder gave a good presentation on Unicode called Unipain, uh, and it's very good. He mentioned something called the Unicode sandwich, where his recommendation is if you have an application in your 
code, you try to keep the strings as Unicode as much as possible, and only when you cross boundaries, like writing to disk, sending over the wire, then you do the conversion to bytes. And it's mostly OK, but for a library like Twisted, I would say in many cases it doesn't apply because we're dealing with protocols. We really need to uh, manipulate bytes in our application. And so I found that a lot uh, in the SSH implementation in Twisted. But you know, sometimes you have to go through the pain to learn these things. And then, uh, so the way that I did this, uh, no, no rocket science, create two virtual ends on the same code base. And you know the commands to create a virtual end were slightly different in Python 2 and 3. And then modify the code, run the unit tests using trial and talks, see what breaks, make sure that it works on Python 2.7 and 3, write new unit tests if you have to, look at the code coverage, and uh, just keep going and going and going. And then, uh, so like when I started last year, uh, there were like around you know half the tests, 57% uh, of the tests uh, in Twisted uh, passed on Python 3 compared to Python 2. And then now we're pretty close, 93%. Uh, I looked at that yesterday. And this is like, I submitted like 325 pull requests, so. 600 to go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, some of those were like one-liner pull requests. Some of them were pretty big, but, you know, with GitHub, you can just like submit pull requests and uh, it's, it's easy. And, and so there's a few modules left, uh, Twisted Mail, News, Web, and that can be done you know, over time or whatever. So what are the things that I learned? Well, um, unit tests and code coverage are very, very helpful for this kind of uh, project. And I got a really good appreciation for uh, unit tests in Python, uh, the CodeCov tool, which uh, it, it has its problems, but it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, and how it integrates with GitHub. You can actually see your coverage in the code browser in GitHub. I mean, I worked on projects uh, before in like C and C++, and people were like imagining how this could be done. And you know, uh, talking about very expensive uh, tools, and people said, "Forget it; it's too expensive," and, and never did it. But you know, you get all this stuff for pretty much free with uh, you know GitHub and all these free things, and it's pretty good and it's very helpful. And the other thing that I learned is porting an old and large code base to Python three. It's a lot of work, and it's a major pain in the ass. And honestly, I mean, I'm not a language designer, so at the end of the day, I don't really see the, you know, what, what's the gain from this? I mean, <laughs> sure, it's, it's, the code is cleaner. So OK, instead of has key, I use in. And it's like, OK. And uh, you know, but, but to me, like, I, you know, and like Unicode, uh, you know, I'm not excited about internationalization, so you know that's probably a bad thing to say, but I, I don't care. So, but I but I understand in 2017, if you have a language, uh, internationalization and Unicode is is kind of important. And uh, there are, there are some uh, uh, benefits, like some of the things like range and uh, iterating over dictionaries don't don't allocate lists anymore. So I can see some performance uh, advantages there. But I mean, uh, you know, I don't get excited about code cleanliness. But you know, that is the direction that the language is going. So you kind of have to be aware of that. Because the perspective that I bring is like, say I'm in a company that has a huge Python 2 code base. And I go to a manager and say, let's port this thing to Python 3. We'll put a lot of engineering effort into it. And at the end of it, you won't have code that does anything different or runs really much faster. But it'll be cleaner, and uh, you'll be on the latest stuff. And like some companies will be like okay, and other companies will be like get lost. Uh, so, but I hope I hope that uh, you know in the future things will get better with Python three. There is a, a, a there are a lot of people looking to performance uh, Python three six and three seven seem to be improving in performance and uh, 
they seem to be getting better and better comparable to Python 2.7. Uh, PyPy, another project which is uh, running, uh, uh, they're developing like a kind of like a JIT kind of just in time compiler kind of system for Python that came out. So hopefully that will improve uh, performance. And I think the good thing is that uh, since Async I.O. is built into the language. I think more people are going to be looking at that for other uh, libraries. And, and, and so basically, the twisted way of doing things is now like part of the language. So more people are looking at it. Like I read a blog post about the uh, author of Flask was like looking into writing Async I.O. style. And so I think that, that's pretty good. Uh, I think it's good that uh, these ideas are kind of more, more mainstream. And you know, thanks to all the people that helped me uh, with code reviews and advice and putting up with my patches. Uh, there's a lot of people um, involved in the project. Some of them are here. Others I haven't met. Uh, there's one guy, Adi Royban. I think he's in the Canary Islands um, off the coast of Africa and Portugal. Never met him, but he helped a lot. Uh, one guy in, in um, Mumbai, India, Abhishek, he helped with code reviews. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's what I've been up to in the past uh, year. So. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. And, uh, Do you want something to the question? chime in about? Or? I was going to ask, like, you know, the, the, the stir the bytes conversion that project that came in the house. Um, did you find when you were doing the different side that A, the code became more, a lot more readable? And how many bytes did you actually find where people were making misconceptions of when it actually was bytes and not a stir? I don't know. So, I mean, from one perspective, I think it's good to distinguish between bytes and stir. But, I mean, on the other hand, it's just like, it's like you have the rug changed out from under you. So I mean, it's like, uh, like say another language like int, you know, like in C where you have an int and suddenly say, well, int, uh, we're not gonna allow the numbers one and two anymore. And it's like, what? Uh, I mean, I have all this code that assigns uh, one and two to int and I can only use like, uh, you know, three, three to nine. It's more like, you know, if somebody says, oh, actually default int should be unsigned. Right. <laughs> so, it's like, oh, you could technically, I guess. Yeah. So I mean, from a, from a language designer perspective, I, I understand that, you know, when in 1991 or whatever, when Python was developed, if straight out of the bat, you know, the model was like how it is now, that would have been good. But when you're in this mode, and if you're starting a new project in Python 3, I think it's good to follow the new model. But for existing code, transitioning, is, is a pain in the ass, and it's like figuring it out. The worst and, I've found in I've heard a few things um, is that the, the Python tool like Twisted does to yeah. to support you can yeah. you know, hacked in with the user that came in to, 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 yeah. To, yeah. Yeah, so like it's a nightmare. Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. Like I find like every time I've done it, I've swore at my computer a lot by doing it, but your code becomes actually a lot more readable and a lot more yeah. like. Maintainable in the future yeah. when you come back to it, and you develop this next year. Yeah, especially with Python. Yeah, yeah. But but I mean, for me, the thing is like, if you could say in Python two, if you have like uh, the performance is like this, and in Python three, the performance is a little bit better. I mean, that it's easier to sell if you're like in a company yeah, or something. Three five and three six, we've got a lot of data that can show you. So okay, cool. Yeah. So um, if, if I could chime in with uh, just one comment on yeah. that, because I think what he was asking was like. Did you find and fix any bugs in Twisted because of that transition? I think that one of the reasons that there aren't really that many bugs in Twisted is Twisted already supported Unicode well before the three transition. Mm -hmm. And so everywhere it was using bytes as stir, it was like an intentional decision. Like we knew that we were doing it. So there was just lots of random syntax changes without a lot of those bugs yeah. being yeah. discovered because there were, it was already yeah. kind of big. Because I've, I've seen yeah. other, other projects where I've just gone. Wow, well, I don't know how that ever works. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just lucky that Python did the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Brett Cannon has a good blog post on some of the other features besides the performance in 3.6 and 3.7. Yeah. Like, or, like, I think it's called like Pitching Python 3 Dimensions or something like that. Yeah. Uh, 
and f strings and stuff like that. Things like oh. exceptions aren't garbage. Okay. <laughs> things like actually useful things. Yeah. yeah. Other than what you guys have seen, I can't believe how excited people are. It's amazing. I, I am actually curious. Raise your hand if you're excited about F strings. The code is a lot nicer. Yeah. 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 So, so wait, you just said you were, but now you are? No, I said I'm not, but it's like, it is yeah. cleaner, but I'm like, it's not. Like, considering all the other things Python 3 gives you, I think F strings is like very minimal. Um, you can make write a lot better code and cleaner code by like typing, doing your byte and coding and decoding better. Uh, and then there's F strings, and I was like, whoa, F strings! Like, huh. I just find it a like, I mean, I literally had people, uh, I went to Facebook, so Facebook, like, just go, yes, we finally got 3.6 and we can use F strings. It's just like, okay, that's easy to convert. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> 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 well, if you're from PHP, it's kind of like, yeah. We've got a lot of Ruby lovers. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, for me, I use Python in like 2002, and I used it as a scripting language, and seeing how the language is now, it feels like more like, you know, I can really build like large systems with this language. It feels more like that now, and that's the direction it's going, and and, and that that's a good thing because I'm seeing things like I would have never have imagined like all this data science stuff. That yeah. you know, like, what the heck is that? And you know, things like huge things like OpenStack. Like what? I you know. Uh, so I think the more that the language moves to help people build larger things that are more robust and gives the building blocks to do that. I think that's good. It means that the language yeah. will be around for a while and, and be used in, in many different things. I think for those of us here who like to have jobs, that's a good thing. So, <laughs> yeah. if, if you're here, you have a vested interest in yeah, yeah. having a future. And so you owe a debt to the data science community. <laughs> 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 it's keeping it alive through this like really tough transition. Um, Maybe it's for the wrap up notification. Sure. Uh, Moshe did the wrap up last time. I think it's a tradition already. Let's go ahead and pray real quick again. <laughs>